Can you see my screen? Yes, that looks great. Thank you, Medina, and also everyone who's listening to my talk. My name is Omid Zoveri, PhD student from Column Lab, and today I will be presenting my work during my PhD. The Bessar system that senses head motion is important for gaze stabilization, spatial orientation, navigation, also postural reflexes that help us to maintain our balance and expect a situation like slipping on ice in which uh, the Bessar system sends head motion signal to central neurons and in turn generates compensatory motor commands to neck and leg. However, these reflexes are not helpful during voluntary head movements, even if the Bessar system sends exactly the same head motion. For example, a figure skater does not need and want these compensatory reflexes uh, when, during a self-generated motion since they would prevent accurate movements. So the brain must somehow distinguish between the situation in which head movement is external applied, termed as exafferents, versus when the head movement is self-generated, termed as reafferents. Our lab has studied cells in the vestibular and deep cell nuclei that generate vestibular spinal reflexes, and that found that in fact the responses are suppressed during active versus passive head movements, which termed as vestibular reafferent suppression. This suggests the existence of a cancellation signal projecting to these cells during active head movements. And to find out the mechanism of this cancellation, our lab has conducted further extensive behavioral and electrophysiological studies on these cells. And a current framework that can explain the result of all of these studies is that the vestibular reafference cancellation signal suppresses incoming vestibular feedback during active head movements only in conditions that make per perceptive signal matches the prediction from an internal model as a result of a generated motor code. Although we know the rules underlying this computation, we don't know the neural mechanism of this cancellation signal. And the prevailing view is that the neural mechanism underlying this computation is cerebellum based. The cerebellum is commonly believed to generate the internal core model that predicts the sensory consequence of self-generated movement, and then computes the differences between prediction and the sensory feedback. In addition, this view is inattentively supported by the fact that the cerebellum closely interacts with the vestibular and deep nuclei. And in fact, simple spikes of these percutaneous cells are main inhibitory inputs to the neurons in these regions. Thus, we hypothesize the cancellation signal originates from percutaneous cells. And given that the simple spikes uh, inhibits downstream neurons, a logical prediction uh, would be the response would be enhanced during active versus passive head movements to be able to suppress the active neurons of vestibular and deep cell nuclei. Thus, uh, we ask two questions. First, how do Perkinian cells encode and integrate sensor inputs during passive movements? And second, do Perkinian cells respond differently during active versus passive head movements? Thus, we made recordings from Perkinian cells and the entire awareness during passive and active cell movements. And since the information about head and body movement comes from vestibular and perceptive feedback, to answer the first question, we characterize the response of Purkinje cells during three passive paradigms, which test the neural response to vestibular only, perceptive only, and combination of both stimulation. And then compare the activity of same neurons during active and a comparable passive head and body movements to answer the second question. And first we focus uh, on only simple spikes of feed and Purkinje cells. We tested the simplest spikes uh, responses to vestibular only stimulation during, uh, by rotating the monkey's whole body. Here are three examples of the protein cell simplest spikes. Top row shows the rotational head velocity and bottom is the simplest spike firing rate. As you can see, the response to two directions does not follow the same rule and the dynamics of the firing rate sometimes lead or lag the head velocity. However, we could successfully quantify the response of the protein cell simplest spikes using linear a model with three dynamic turns. And using this approach, we quantify the sensitivity to each direction of movement separately and then identify preferred and non-preferred direction. And then we use the result from this modeling to compare response to different conditions. Next, to test the response to the neck per perception alone, we moved Mikey's body while the head was fixed in space. And right, I compared the per perceptive sensitivity of protein cells to their vestibular sensitivity which shows that most Perkinian cells respond to both passive vestibular and perceptive uh, stimulation, which is denoted by black circles. Interestingly, when we added the response to vestibular and neck perception together, uh, which is shown as dashed gray lines, we could successfully predict the response to the combination of vestibular and perception during head, uh, 
passive head and body rotations. The scatter plots on the right compares the sensitivity and phase of response to head and body rotation compared to what's predicted from summation model, which shows significant correlation. Thus, our results so far show that Perkinsa receives for uh, both vestibular neck percussive inputs and linear to uh, add them together during a passive head and body movement. Next, for the second question, we wanted to know how these responses are compared to the response in condition that might be actively generated head and body movements. Here on left, uh, there is an example of the neural activity of the same cell during passive and active head movements. As you can see, a model from the passive condition overestimated the firing rate during active head movements. The bar plot shows the comparison between sensitive to 61 per kin cell simple spikes during passive and active head movements, which demonstrate markedly suppressed sensitivity during active rotational head movements for both preferred and non preferred direction. We also assess the simple spike activity during a combination of active and passive stimulation, as shown by this example. And we found that the simplest spikes activity mostly encode passive part of the self motion. And here is the population results, which shows that the sensitivity to passive and active parts of the combined stimulation were comparable to the passive and active stimulation alone. We also looked at the Perkins cell response to active and passive linear movement, and similarly found markedly suppressed response to an active translation of health. Thus, our results show that the single Perkinsa cell simple spike response is reduced uh, during active compared to passive head movements, which is surprising given the fact that they inhibit visceral and deep cell nuclei. However, each neuron in uh, deep cell nuclei receives inputs from more than one Perkinsa cell, which is around 40 to 50 Perkinsa cells, which suggests that the cancellation signal to the visceral and deep cell nuclei can be explained by convergence of population Perkinsa cells. And in fact, we did some preliminary analysis, which suggests that the observed diversity of the protein cell simple spike response enables the population protein cell to produce such cancellation. Next, we wanted to investigate the neural mechanism of the suppressed simple spike responses during uh, active head movements. And to investigate this, we changed our focus to the inputs of the protein cells. As I showed previously, protein cell receives vestibular and necropressive inputs that provides information during both passive and active head movements. However, during active head movements, there is extra information about the motor command, which is not available during passive head movements. So the question is whether protein cells also respond to the neck motor command. And to answer this question, while monkey was generating active head movements, in some random trials, we stopped the head movement and measured the torque that was generated to move the head. Then we checked if the firing rate of Perkin cells has significantly changed as a result of the torque. And in fact, we found most cells respond to generation of the head torque in the absence of motor, motor command and uh, head motion. So the same cells respond to both sensory and motor information about the head movements, which suggests that the ne neck motor inputs could potentially contribute to suppressing Perkin cell simple spikes during active head movement. And the simplest model for this contribution is a linear summation of sensory and motor inputs. This model suggests that the response to the motor command alone would be proportional to the difference between the response to active and passive head and body movements, which means the larger difference between active and passive sensitivity would result in higher sensitivity motor command and vice versa. However, as shown by this example cell, the response of the most cells neck motor inputs were not consistent with the prediction from linear model showing changes in the opposite direction. Uh, this inconsistency is also shown for a population of protein cell by red circles in the scatter plot. Thus, a linear model based on vestibular per perception and motor inputs cannot account for the observed attenuation of protein cells firing rates during active movements. This indicates an existence of the nonlinear uh, computations, which is what we're currently investigating. So the result I presented so far were based on the protein cell simple spikes. However, protein cells also produce complex spikes that occurs about once per second. And a common wisdom is that complex spikes activity encodes sensory and motor error. So to gain insight about their computation, we also analyze complex spikes during active and passive head movements. Here on left, you can see the complex spike responses from two example perkin cells during passive stimulation. 
and as it's indicated by uh, red boxes, complex spikes exhibit temporal precision that is time-locked to the onset of passive uh, head movement. However, this precise time locking was not seen during active head movements. On right, you can see the population result that shows significant increase in the probability of the complex spikes within 20 milliseconds after onset of passive but not active head movements. This is interesting as it's demonstrated that complex spikes are preferential generous at the onset of unexpected stimulation, which provides particularly compelling evidence that the complex spikes encode prediction error. So uh, I showed that the Purkinje cell's simple spike activity during passive head motion linearly integrates visible and per perception inputs, and their neural modulation is markedly reduced during active. Further, during active head motion, neurons do not encode linear combination of motor, vestibular, and perceptive inputs, which indicates no linear integration of these inputs. Overall, the reduction in single protein cell modulation during active movements was surprising given that they inhibit vestibular and deep cell nuclei, which has implications for population coding that I'm currently investigating. Finally, analyzing protein cells complex spikes showed that they are time lag to the onset of the passive motion, but not active motion, which suggests that they encode some sort of unexpected sensor inputs. And then I want to thank everyone in the color lab and also thank you for listening. Thank you, Ami. That was some really beautiful work and uh, 